In this video, we are going to compare ChatGPT3 to ChatGPT4 to see if it's really the big improvement that everyone claims that we're gonna ask it some questions, we're gonna put it through its paces, and we're gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison to see if it's worth your time. Hi, my name is Alston Godbolt with AlstonGodbolt.com. I create content to actually help you make money online and not just to put money into my own pockets. And if you want to be added to this globe, simply reply or comment down below with your city, state, province, country, and I'll get you pinned. All right, as I mentioned, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna do a direct comparison between ChatGPT3 and the upgraded version of ChatGPT4. We're gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison where we're gonna ask the exact same questions and a wide variety of topics to see if it's really worth it, to see if it's really that big of an upgrade. Now, let's go ahead and jump right into my computer so we can get this underway. Now, I did a little bit of research. Right, everyone claims that ChatGPT4 is this huge improvement over three. Now, one thing that we have to look at is the model size. ChatGPT3 was modeled after 175 billion parameters and ChatGPT4 was modeled after one trillion parameters. So in theory, it's supposed to be this huge upgrade. To give you a visual representation, now I spent a lot of time drawing this, to get a visual representation of the difference, this is ChatGPT3 off of the, uh, the parameters and then ChatGPT4. There's a huge difference here and we're gonna see if this is really that big of a deal. All right, so on the left-hand side, we have ChatGPT3. On the right-hand side, we have ChatGPT4. First thing we're gonna do is we are going to say, uh, assume our target audience are fishermen. Where is the best place to catch fish? Where the best place to catch fish in, we'll say Wisconsin. And we are going to we're gonna put that both in the ChatGPT3 version and then the ChatGPT4. Now note that the ChatGPT4 version, we are limited on the number of questions or requests that we can ask it, so it's going to be important that we are efficient. All right, on the left-hand side, you can see as an AI language model, I don't have access to real-time fishing data and locations. However, I can suggest some popular fishing spots in Wisconsin, Lake Winnebago, that's Okay, uh, additionally, let's see, what Lake Winnebago, Green Bay, and Door County, Wisconsin River. Okay, so these answers are okay, but if we look at ChatGPT4, it just went ahead and it spent a little bit more time answering the question. Another question that we can ask it is, uh, what are the newest sports I could start a blog about? But if we look on the right-hand side under ChatGPT4, we can see that it's providing more detailed information. It is going into depth, talking about the best types of fish that you can catch. For example, Sturgeon Bay is one of the best here in Wisconsin, a smallmouth bass. Yeah, so this is a, a pretty good answer. Now, was the response better or worse? It's actually asking us. Now, let's go ahead and ask ChatGPT3, what are the newest sports I could start a blog about. Now hopefully we see pickleball as one of them. Let's see, as an AI language model, I don't have access to real-time data. It's very, it's making, letting us know that it doesn't know the most up-to-date information, which is interesting, but okay, eSports, ultimate frisbee, parkour, obstacle course racing, CrossFit, and pickleball. Okay, so that's a, a decent answer. If we come over to ChatGPT4, we can see that it just answers the question. It, the ChatGPT 3 or 3.5 tries to frame it to let us know that, hey, we don't um, we don't exactly know up to the minute, but here's a general idea that we can you can use. Um, on the right-hand side with ChatGPT 4, you can see it's talking about drone racing, where on ChatGPT 3, it started off with eSports. Pickleball, okay, that's a, a good one to um, list, but you can see, I think that so far, the learning model is doing a pretty good job of answering the questions with a little bit more detail. Um, fin swimming, I have never actually heard of that. And so um, that's something that we could do a little bit more research. Now, why would this be important? If we're looking to start a blog that's not gonna have as much comp competition, we could look at fin swimming or pad ball, I'm not even sure how to pronounce that, but this is giving us information that is not available in chat GPT-3 or 3.5. So as we can see, it's, it's offering a little bit better information. It's giving us more information, foot golf. These are all different blogs that we could start writing in. Next thing I wanna ask it is, I'm going to say, um, create 
uh, YouTube script. Now, what I want you to remember, and I'm a huge proponent on this, don't use ChatGPT just to be your sole creative writer or copywriter or YouTube script writer. Use it as a guide so that you can enter in your own personality because ultimately people want to buy from other people and they're not going to want to just buy from from um, uh, basically an AI that doesn't really have a soul. Create a YouTube video script for the best um, PlayStation 5 video games for beginner. All right, so let's see what what comes back. Now let's see what it says. It's gonna give us probably very generic and, and general information about these five. Okay, so um, Astro's Playroom, Spider-Man, Sackboy, Demon Souls, Ratchet and Clank. In my opinion, a couple of these might be a little bit too difficult for someone that's getting started. Let's take a look and see what ChatGPT4 says about this. Now if we scroll up, it already gives us a title. Top five PlayStation 5 games for beginners. Dive into gaming with ease. That's a pretty good title that we could put. Now, it's actually giving us a, an actual script. It's not just giving us an outline. I probably should have asked for an outline, but you can see that it's giving us a pretty good amount of information. Look at this. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's actually creating a script and, and with ChatGPT3, it kind of just gave us an outline. Another thing while, while that's writing is I want to ask it to write an email. Um, write and let's see, write an email sequence for people that want to lose weight. My target audience is men over 50 that are 30 pounds overweight. They want to lose weight without going to the gym. They have money to buy things, but only if it is necessary. Write a three-day email sequence uh, recommending products that can help them lose weight. All right, so I wrote a pretty in-depth question for ChatGPT to decipher. And as soon as it's done over here, first we gotta take a look and see what it says, but as soon as it's done, we are going to um, ask this ask this question. But if we look, look how thorough and in-depth this, this answer is. It gives us background music, it actually gives us a, a step by a script, it tells us to, to trans, transition to the next scene. Um, what I would have to do, what anyone would have to do, is go in and ask for a little bit more information. For example, I'd have to ask for benefits or pros of using or playing with Ratchet and Clank as a beginner. This is probably not going to be long enough for a 10 minute video or an eight minute video, but this is a pretty good start. Much more in depth some of the video, some of the titles do overlap, but I think this is much more in depth than what you see over here. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look and ask ChatGPT3 to write an email sequence for us. We're going to paste this one over here like that. So when as, as soon as that one is ready, we can take a look. But if we look here, you can see that it's writing. It gives us a pretty good headline. Welcome to our weight loss journey. The second headline is uh, tips for losing weight without going to the gym. Okay, so that's good. It, it, it listened or understood what we were saying. And then if we scroll down to the third one, our final recommendation for weight loss products. Okay, so, you know, to be honest, it's a little bit light on content. It's a good starting point. Now, again, remember, with ChatGPT 3 or 4, 8, use it as a starting point. Don't use it as your entire copywriting um, copywriter. This isn't, uh, th this is a, an assistant. Okay. So if we look, start your weight loss journey from home. This is a, a good one because it understood that we are targeting people that want to work out from home. And now it's actually looking at, it's, it's asking questions that are going to get an emotional response. Whereas, uh, welcome to our weight loss email sequence. This is a, a weird first sentence. We're excited to help you achieve your goals and improve your health. If you like, if you're like many men over 50, losing weight can seem like an uphill battle. 
Uh, look at this one. Are you tired of carrying around those extra 30 pounds, ready to feel healthier, lighter, and more confident without stepping foot inside a gym? So as you can see, the language that it uses is, is better. It even uses different emojis that we could copy right into our email sequence, our email marketing sequence. But if we look at this, this actually looks, this looks pretty good. Um, but look at this one, subject, subject line day two, boost your weight loss with this secret weapon. This is interesting. Now it has a few different products, adjustable dumbbells. On day two, it does not look like it recommends any products. So you can see that ChatGPT4, while limited on the number of questions you can ask it, it has done a pretty good job of listening to what we what we wrote or what we typed and making and, and making a pretty compelling email sequence. Now, of course, what you want to do is read through it, make sure that it is coherent and makes sense and it sounds like a person. One of the issues that you may run into when using AI is that it doesn't always sound like a person. It sounds like AI trying to pretend like it's a person. One question that I want to ask it is, um, who won the, 20, the 2022 World Series? And so we will ask both models this question and it probably will not have it probably will tell us that it can't come up with an answer because the language model isn't until 2021. We'll ask it one more question after this, but this is usually where the hang up is. So if we look, this email sequence, this three day email sequence for ChatGPT is pretty good. You definitely wanna go through and read it, make sure it sounds like a human wrote it. But if we look at this, who won the 2022 World Series? As an AI language model, I cannot predict future events such as the winner of the 2022 World Series as I do not have access to information beyond my knowledge cutoff date of September 2021. Let's take a look and see what 4 says. 4 also says, I'm sorry, I can't do that. Um, one thing that we want to ask it is come up with lead magnet ideas for my target target audience. Let's see, we'll copy this and we're gonna paste it over here. Um, I'm sorry, but my knowledge only goes up until September, 2021 and I could not provide information on the winner of the 2022 World Series. Please consult a reliable and up-to-date source like a sports news website or search engine. So if it can't answer the question, it tells us where to go. So that's pretty cool. Let's take a look at one more question here. Come up with lead magnet ideas for my target audience, a seven day meal plan, home workout guide, healthy recipe ebook, fitness tracker app, exclusive discounts, online community. Okay, and let's take a look and see what this one says. This one says, ChatGPT4 says, to provide you with the best lead magnet ideas, I'll need some information about your target audience. One thing that I do like about ChatGPT3 is it can look backwards. It does a better job of looking backward. List lead magnet ideas. All right. So as soon as that is done, we'll go ahead and we'll have it trigger again, and we'll actually see if it comes up with um, decent lead magnet ideas that are better or on par, because these aren't, these aren't terrible. Fitness Tracker app, um, we'll just hit stop generating like that, and we're gonna hit enter once again, and let's see what the answer is. Lead magnet ideas. Our ebook, the No Gym Weight Loss Guide for Men Over 50, that actually, the thing that I like about ChatGPT4 is that it gives us a, a title, the 50 plus men's guide to healthy eating meal plans and recipes. So on this one, it just gives us, okay, do a, do a healthy recipe ebook. But on this side, it tells us to, that to, it gives us a title, the no gym weight loss guide for men over 50. So you can see that, and it even gives us an email sequence, which is interesting that I didn't quite ask for that. Uh, so we'll just stop generating there. So in general, if we're comparing ChatGPT 3.5 to ChatGPT 4, we can see that there is a pretty big difference between the two. Um, ChatGPT 3 gives us some good information, but ChatGPT 4 takes the information and it kicks it up a notch. It gives us titles of, of books. It, it gives us more thorough information. So if you have the ability to use ChatGPT4, I certainly recommend it. Uh, it still isn't up to date when it comes to new information, which is one of the drawbacks. But overall, you can see that there is a pretty big difference between the two. Now that you know that there is a difference between ChatGPT 
five, and four, click the first link in the description for my free affiliate marketing planners. Those planners will help you plan and organize your affiliate marketing business so that you can make more money online. Click the first link in the description or go to alstongodbolt.com forward slash start to download your free planners today. Watch this video next because YouTube says it will help you grow your online business.